Hello! In this video, we will discuss igneous rocks. The discussion will be followed by an edible activity that you can do at home. So let's begin. To kick things off, we need some vocabulary. Let's begin with the definition of an igneous rock. Igneous rocks are rocks that form when hot molten magma crystallizes and solidifies or turns to rock. The magma forms deep within the earth and rises to the surface. There are two types of igneous rocks, intrusive igneous rocks and extrusive igneous rocks. Intrusive igneous rocks form when the magma gets stuck inside the earth and cools there. Extrusive igneous rocks form when magma exits through a volcano or a fissure and cools on the surface of the earth. Some igneous rocks you may be familiar with include granite and basalt. Let's move on to the definition of and the difference between mafic versus felsic. Mafic refers to magmas, rocks, and minerals that are heavier in weight and darker in color than felsic magmas, rocks, and minerals. Mafic magmas, rocks, and minerals are heavier in weight because they are made up of heavier, darker colored elements. In order to understand how we get these two rock types, it is important to be familiar with the makeup or composition of the earth. But before we do that, we better talk about tectonics for a minute. Now for an overview of plate tectonics. The earth is made up of seven major tectonic plates that are always in motion. You can think of these tectonic plates as the thin layer of ice on top of your soda. The soda being the melted portion of the inside of the earth and the mantle where the magma lives. Tectonic plates are constantly traveling around on the mantle even if you can't see or feel them doing so. The plates may converge, forming a convergent margin, diverge, forming a divergent margin, or slide past one another, forming a transform plate boundary. First, we will look at divergent margins. This happens when tectonic plates move away or diverge from one another. When plates move away from one another, the mantle is exposed and magma will spill out onto the surface of the earth as lava, which cools and makes new crust. Next, we will look at convergent margins. Since the earth is a sphere where there are tectonic plates moving away from one another in one portion of the world, there are plates crashing into one another in another part of the world. When plates of equal density crash into one another, they will buckle or fold, and this is where mountains are built. So, when continental crust crashes into continental crust, or oceanic crust collides with oceanic crust, neither will give, so they just buckle and build mountains upward. However, when plates of different densities collide, the heavier plate will sink or subduct underneath the lighter plate, eventually turning the heavier plate back into magma. Oceanic crust is very dense or heavy, so it will sink underneath the lighter continental crust. As it sinks and the plate is melted, magma chambers are created, which produce volcanic mountain ranges as the buoyant magma tries to reach the surface. Finally, we look at transform plate boundaries. This happens when two plates slide past one another. This is the type of boundary the San Andreas Fault represents. This is a diagram of the makeup or the composition of the Earth, along with a little tectonic information. We will start at the bottom and work our way to the top. We start with the inner core or the center of the earth, which is a solid ball believed to be made of an iron nickel alloy. Moving out, we enter into the liquid nickel iron, 
outer core that is under the ultramafic lower mantle. Then we enter into our topic of discussion, the upper mantle and the crust. The upper mantle is made up of heavy mafic materials in the form of magma. The crust rides on the liquid upper mantle. The heat along with the liquid nature of the mantle is what makes our tectonic plates move. What we can see in this diagram is when the crust is getting stretched or spreading is occurring, it thins, putting the surface of the earth very close to the mantle. So close that the magma can flow onto the surface of the earth either through smaller volcanoes or fissures. We can also see where the plates are converging, the oceanic crust is smashing into and diving, also known as subducting, underneath the continental crust. As the oceanic crust gets pulled into the mantle, it begins to melt and turn back into magma. That magma starts to make its way to the surface through some really thick crust. As it pushes up, huge volcanoes like Mount St. Helens are formed. These volcanoes are where this magma can flow out onto the surface. How the magma makes its way to the surface and how long it spins in the crust can change the makeup or the composition of the magma. Let's explore that. So as we discussed earlier, there are two groups of igneous rocks, intrusive, which are made from magma that is cooled inside of the earth, and extrusive, made from magma that is cooled on the surface of the earth. This slide shows the three most common intrusive rocks and the three most common extrusive rocks. What is important to note here is that a gabbro is made up of the same stuff that a basalt is. Only the gabbro cooled inside of the earth and the basalt flowed out onto the surface of the earth and cooled. The diorite is made up of the same stuff that the andesite is, and the same is true for the rhyolite and the granite. Diorites and granites cooled under the surface of the earth, where andesites and rhyolites cooled on the surface of the earth. Note the change in color as the rocks transition from mafic to felsic. Look at how much darker in color the mafic rocks are compared to the felsic rocks. Basalts are very dark gray to black, where rhyolites are very light tan to white. Also, take a close look at the images. Look at the differences between the intrusive rocks and the extrusive rocks. It should be easy to see the crystals that are on display in the intrusive rocks and the lack of crystals in the extrusive rocks. This is because intrusive rocks cooled slowly, giving the elements plenty of time to find each other and bond, forming big, visible crystal faces, where extrusive rocks cooled quickly on the surface, where the crystals were not given much time to form. So let's merge the rocks with the diagram we saw earlier. Let's start with the spreading centers. At the spreading centers, you can see that the mantle, which is mafic in composition, is really, really close or practically at the surface of the earth. As a result, any rocks that would form from magmas here would be mafic in composition. If the magma cools slowly under the surface of the earth, one would expect a gabbro to form, where if it flowed out onto the surface of the earth and cooled, one would expect a basalt. Moving on to the zone where our oceanic and continental crusts are converging. As the ocean crust dives or subducts down into the mantle, it is melted. As buoyant plumes of magma are released into the mantle, they try to make their way to the surface and they have to fight through some pretty thick crust to do so. The crust could be 20 miles thick or it could be 50 miles thick, whichever the case, the longer it takes for the mafic magma to make its way to the surface or start to cool, the more felsic it will become. The magma will melt the more felsic crust that it is moving through. That melted felsic material will mix with the mafic magma, making the magma more and more felsic as more and more felsic material is added. It is in these zones 
you can expect to find andesites and rhyolites that have been erupted onto the surface or diorites and granites that have cooled underground. Now it's time for some edible geology. In this video, we are making some felsic fudge. This activity is meant to mimic changes in magma as it is contaminated by the crust. Let's get started. Here are the ingredients you will need. Hopefully most of these things you have on hand. If you don't have the condensed milk, there is a recipe that calls for just marshmallows and chocolate chips. Try to Google quick marshmallow dash chocolate chip fudge. The recipe should come up. The initial mixture without the marshmallows will be our heavy, dark colored mafic magma. The marshmallows will represent our lighter colored, lighter weight, felsic continental crust. And last, but certainly not least, in my eyes at least, is the peanut butter, representing the surface of the earth. Of course, you can elect not to put the peanut butter down. Here are the instructions. It doesn't take too much time. You could pause this video and follow the instructions for making the magma and resume after you're done or watch the rest of the video and come back to this segment. Your choice. The pot serves as the magma chamber where all the mixing takes place. Take a picture of the magma before you add the marshmallows to document the color change. Here are our pictures. Notice the lighter color of our contaminated magma compared to our initial magma before we added the marshmallows. Here's our eruption. Our magma is coming out of the magma chamber and erupting onto the surface as lava. As soon as the lava cools, we will have our extrusive igneous rock. After the lava cools, we put ours in the refrigerator for a little bit, cut and enjoy. It's actually really good. This concludes our discussion on igneous rocks. For review, here are some questions you could ask the students or student. In general terms, what is plate tectonics? List the five different layers of the earth discussed in this video. In what kind of tectonic environment would you expect to find mafic igneous rocks and why? In what kind of tectonic environment would you expect to find felsic igneous rocks and why? What is the difference between intrusive and extrusive rocks and how does cooling of the magma play a role? How were the chocolate chips similar to mafic magma? How was the marshmallow similar to continental crust. We hope you have enjoyed this video and learning about igneous rocks. Thanks for watching and have a great day.